IQ Testing, Understanding the Process, a presentation by Science and Arts Academy featuring special guest Dr. Vanita Patel. My name is Mindy Hildebrandt and I'm the Director of Enrollment Management at Science and Arts Academy, an independent school serving junior kindergarten through eighth grade gifted students located in Des Plaines, Illinois. As IQ testing is an admissions requirement for our school, families are often looking for more understanding and insight into this process. Dr. Vanita Patel has been a great resource to SAA families by not only offering to administer this assessment, but also providing general information about the test and the testing process. We're pleased to welcome her here today to share more information with you. Thanks, Mindy. It has been a true pleasure to have partnered with Science and Arts Academy for so many years. One of my roles in this partnership with SAA is to administer IQ tests to prospective students, interpret those results, and explain the results to parents and teachers. Now, I can only imagine the multitude of questions that you may be wondering. Questions like, what actually is an IQ test? What does IQ stand for? What is the testing process like and what will my child be experiencing during the testing? And how can I best prepare my child for the test? In this audio presentation, I will answer these questions and many more so that you will have a solid understanding of everything involved during the IQ testing process. First, let's briefly talk about the term IQ and what that means. The acronym IQ stands for Intelligence Quotient, which is a series of scores the student earns based on how they performed on the test. In other words, IQ is the result in the form of scores that compares a student's performance with other people in the same age group who took the same test. It is a standardized measure, which means everyone who takes the test follows the same set of established guidelines in an effort to maintain valid and reliable results. Now, before we go any further, I think it's really important to talk a bit about this notion or concept of intelligence. There are many aspects of intelligence, some that can be measured and quantified, and some that simply cannot. While intelligence is one of the most talked about subjects in the fields of education and psychology, there have been long-standing debates on what constitutes intelligence. For the purpose of IQ testing as it relates to this presentation and SAA admissions criteria, I will be discussing the five main cognitive or thinking domain areas that are included and make up the most widely used IQ test. Each area assesses different yet related abilities, which I will explain. The most common and extensively used IQ test is called the Wechsler scale. The Wechsler Preschool and Primary Scale of Intelligence, also referred to as the WIPSI, is used for children ages 2 through 7. The Wechsler Intelligence Scale for Children, also known as the WISC, is administered to students between the ages of 6 and 16. Both versions of the Wechsler scales are considered to be the gold standard in the field of education. Now, I'll explain each domain area that makes up the IQ test. The first domain area I will describe is verbal comprehension. Verbal comprehension looks at a student's ability to share their knowledge when asked a series of language-loaded questions. The student must utilize their verbal reasoning and verbal problem-solving skills. Vocabulary, general knowledge, higher order verbal concepts, and social reasoning are all assessed in the verbal comprehension domain. Second, we have visual spatial reasoning, which assesses the ability to organize visual information into meaningful patterns and understand 
how they might change in a given space and varying positions. The subtests in this domain are hands-on as a student must manipulate three-dimensional blocks and several puzzle pieces. Next, there's fluid reasoning, which provides an indication of the student's nonverbal reasoning skills. Fluid reasoning is the ability to problem solve without the use of words and to think fluidly when faced with challenging problems. The student is expected to apply abstract thinking and a level of logic as they complete patterns and analyze a series of items that fit into appropriate categories. Working memory, which is the fourth domain area, looks at the student's ability to attend to and process series of verbal and visual information in memory and then to formulate a response. The fifth and final domain area is called processing speed. Processing speed is a combination of multiple skills working together, visual motor, visual scanning, speed, and accuracy. The subtests within the processing speed domain are timed and mainly paper pencil. Processing speed provides a measure of the student's ability to process simple or routine visual information combined with fine motor skills within a short time frame. The most shared skill that exists among all of the domain areas is problem solving. You may be pleased to know that the test is designed in such a way that the items are engaging, interactive, and generally game-like in quality, which is a fun, non-threatening way to tap into the student's problem-solving abilities. Parents and students can expect the test to take anywhere from about an hour to an hour and a half. The administration of the test is one-to-one, -one, meaning only the examiner and the student are present. The testing is done in a quiet, comfortable room free from outside distractions. Before the test begins, the examiner will ask the parent several questions in order to gain as much relevant information about the child. Questions about the child's interests, motivators, developmental milestones, past and current academics are some pieces of information that helps in understanding the whole child and every effort is made to establish a rapport with the student and to make sure they feel comfortable and motivated to perform consistent with their capabilities. So, how can you prepare your child for the test? Just make sure your child is well-rested, well-fed, and free of any illnesses. In order to alleviate any anxieties and pressure your child may be experiencing prior to the appointment, it's best to stay clear from words like test or evaluation when discussing with them. Instead, letting them know that you and teachers need information about how they best learn so that we can all make sure they are getting what they need at school not only is accurate, but may also provide relief from any added pressure they may be experiencing. Once the administration of the IQ test is complete, the examiner must score and analyze the results both quantitatively and qualitatively. Both are equally important, meaning that we are just as much interested in the approach the student employed during the complicated items, their attention and concentration level, strategies they used, motivation, and problem-solving techniques. You will receive a standard score and corresponding percentiles for each of the five domain areas described, as well as the full-scale IQ score, which is a combination of the five domain areas. Though IQ tests certainly tell us a wealth of information about our students' cognitive abilities, please keep in mind that there are limitation to IQ tests. There are several aspects of our students' learning that are just as crucial, if not more, than IQ tests. IQ tests cannot measure or quantify a child's creativity, 
leadership skills, imagination, their curiosity for certain concepts, or long-term grit and resiliency when faced with challenges. In fact, we know that when our students view their own intelligence as changeable and malleable rather than fixed and stable, their achievements are greater. I want to make sure that we understand and appreciate that our students are much, much more than IQ scores, percentiles, and categories. In fact, the message I most want my students to keep with them is always do your best, keep asking questions, work hard, and know that you are never defined by any test score. I hope I have answered your questions about the IQ testing process and eased any concerns you might have had. If there are any further questions, please feel free to reach out to me by email or phone. Thank you for listening to this audio presentation.